Many of the products that we work with in the HVACR systems operate off of electricity. And I get a lot of requests for classes on basic electricity where people want to know some of the basics on, on these products and how to work with the products. Now, when I worked in a motor shop in 1969, one of the very first things that I was taught is that you always turn the power off, first thing. Now, I don't say that today. Now, the most important thing with electricity is to stay safe, but with some of the products that we have today, we have some sophisticated electronics in them. And those electronics will record if there has been a problem with the equipment. And that will show up as a fault code. So if we turn the electricity off, we'll lose those fault codes. And then we won't have an idea, perhaps, of what may have caused failure in that piece of equipment. So I say today, before turning the power off, walk around the equipment, see what you have. Now, if somebody is in danger, if somebody's life is in danger, their health is in danger because power is on, then of course, turn the power off, the heck with the fault codes. But if it's safe to be able to examine the area and to examine the equipment to see if by turning the power off you lose fault codes, then by all means do that. But then turn the power off. After you have recovered those fault codes, turn the power off and absolutely positively make certain that the power is off. Don't assume that just because you pulled the breaker that the power is off. Check. Check with your meter and double check to make sure the power is off. I hear so many times where the breaker has been miswired and when they pull it off, the power is not off. So be sure you do that. And do be aware that you might have situations where there could be multiple sources of power going to the equipment. With compressors, for example, the crankcase heater could be powered by another source. So be sure that the power is off. And when you're working with this equipment, always, always, always wear safety glasses use insulated handled tools, wear gloves to protect yourself. So always put safety number one. When you do shut the power off, make sure that you lock it and tag it. Tag that so that people know that it's not just an inadvertent reason that the power is off. They know that someone has turned that off intentionally. So make sure you tag and lock that power once you've turned it off. So let's get into electricity. And what is electricity? Now I mentioned this is basic. And I don't think that we can get more basic than just looking around the room. Look at everything around you. Everything around you consists of atoms. That's pretty basic. Now within those atoms, in fact in the nucleus of those atoms, there are three elements that we are really, really interested in. So in the nucleus of the atom, we have something called a proton. A proton, pro, pro, is a positively charged component of that atom. We also have something called a neutron. Neutron. Neutral. The neutron has no electrical charge to it. And there's a third component called the electron. Now the electron is a negatively charged component in the nucleus of the atom. Now when we talk about electricity, we like to talk about electrons. And the reason that we like to talk about electrons is that electrons will jump 
from one atom to another atom. So they move. That's energy. So if we could capture that, then we have something. And we do capture it. We like to capture those electrons, but then they like to jump from atom to atom. They like to go places where maybe we don't want them to go, but we'll capture those electrons and put them on things called conductors. And the conductors are, I like to think of them as roads. The conductors help direct the electrons to where we want them to go. So now we got something. And that gives us our power. And we refer to that as current. Now, as we move along in this series, we're going to be talking more about current. And current is measured in amps. And the current is the flow, it's the force of that uh, electron, of our electricity. Now we also have a, a volume of that electricity, and that volume is referred to in volts. That's the pressure. The pressure is referred to in volts the flow in the amps, but then there's also a resistance to the flow of those electrons. And that resistance we measure in ohms. And we can use our multimeter for measuring those different characteristics. So stick with us through this series. And we're going to get a lot deeper into volts amps and ohms. And we're going to show you how through some of the tools that you have, such as your multimeter, to, to be able to check the characteristics, the performance characteristics of a number of these items to see if they're operating properly. So stay with us. We appreciate you being here at the Packard Academy today and come back soon. Thanks.